Okay. So, okay. Now let's let's talk about the um, this module a bit, นะครับ Um, on last class, I just like um introduce you, นะครับ for this um for this module, นะครับ a bit for the um user interface design, นะครับ this this one we move from um the the analysis phase to the design phase already, นะครับ And then in this um, in this phase, we will talk about like the guidelines for um, the user interface. Nah, we will talk about the guideline for user interface. Um, also, um, the components, nah, and also um, the components in what the components in um, um, user interface, nah, like screen elements and control. And also, I'll talk about the output design, nah, the um, technologies. For input and output design and issues as well. So in this module, นะครับ because um this module is like um the next phase after the analysis phase and is one of the most important phase, นะครับ because it is the way that you have to just um communicate between นะครับ um users and the programmers, นะครับ or developer. So that's why we have to prepare the physical design, นะครับ Um, and this physical design must match with the requirements of the user, so that um, the users will satisfy, will be satisfied with like um, the system that will come out, and also the developer has to serve the needs of the of the users as well. So um, the task in this phase, we have to do user interface design. Also, we have to do the data design, นะครับ And also, um, we do the system architecture as well, นะครับ So in this one, นะครับ So um, the output, นะครับ Or the deliverable of this um design phase is the design spec, นะครับ Document, นะครับ Is the design spec document. So in this phase, นะครับ When we talk about um the user interface design, นะครับ This is the first task of the design phase, นะครับ So when we have to do, นะครับ the design phase here, it is extremely important, นะครับ Um because as I told you earlier, this is the way, นะครับ is the uh what to say the main entrance for the users when they have to use the system, นะครับ So um everyone wants the system to be easy to learn and easy to use as well, นะครับ Um, when we talk about UI, นะครับ or user interface, นะครับ it just like um consists and combine um all of these things, including hardware, software, นะครับ screens, นะครับ menus, functions, output and features, นะครับ that um the users will be used to interact, นะครับ or interface with the system, นะครับ so okay in the past, นะครับ we had the uh, um You, um, UI design นะครับ started from process control นะครับ um, in the past it's just like everything was straightforwardly you had a button นะครับ that was easily understand and then you just click or just press or just tap นะครับ on the button and just that นะครับ that was to um to control the process in the information system only นะครับ So, um, because in the past we said that okay, we had the centralized data processing. นะครับ We try to um make the users to be able to control the system. นะครับ And it was enterprise wide system. So that means you design once and everyone in the organization use the same um page or same screen. นะครับ The primary focus also shifted from IT department to users themselves. Now you can see that. Um, each person or each user may want their own need, นะครับ or their own design. So because right now it becomes a user-centered system, นะครับ Um, in order to make everyone or every user to uh what to say customize, นะครับ their own screen, their own user interface, นะครับ It requires the understanding of human-computer interaction. นะครับ and also user centered design principles as well for um user interface um designer or UI designer นะครับ this one นะครับ sometimes the um system analyst may have to do the UI by yourself some of the systems you may have the UI designer that you specially hire them to do the UI design so that it match with 
what the users need. So for the human computer interaction, this is a science, a discipline, a subdiscipline in computer science as well. Human computer interaction or HCI. This science describes the relationship between computers and the users. Or people who use that system, or people who use that computers to perform their task or their job. Normally, the HCI can be conveyed between users and the computer through the GUI, graphical user interface. The main objective for the HCI is to create user-friendly environment and design that is easy to learn and to use. So that's why you can see that right now, if you just like um, have a look on some offices, some shares, apart from, apart, um, apart from cozy, um, the um, users, when they sit, they have to work effectively as well. So HCI also related to ergonomics as well. So you can see that when you go to some offices, um, their shares look like uh, very, very modern. And also, once you sit on that chair, you feel like it's very comfortable, and then you can just like work um, for a long time without any tired, without any tiredness. So uh, that one is um, the ergonomic design that is a part of HCI um, and user interface design too. So that means um, some of the shares may cost you like 30, 40,000 bahts because it's not just because of the materials, but it's because of the design. The design here means that you can sit and work without having the problems like the, what to say, um, office syndrome, something like that. While some of the chair, you can see that if you have to sit um, somewhere, for example, if they have a stool, and then you just like sit on the stool for a long time, you just like, you feel have some back pain or you may feel just like some um, tired on your legs, or sometimes on the table, that might be like too low um, from the um, position that you sit. You may feel like, oh, you have the neck ache, something like that. And when you just like take a look on the screen for a long time, it may cause the problem of just like eye injury as well. And um, you may have heard that, okay, um, right now, many of the screen, um, they try to um, have the way in order to reduce the blue ray color, uh, the, the blue light, sorry, the blue light, because it's destroy, it can destroy your eyesight as well. So this is a part of the HCI that you have to know. Now, let's see. The next one, I'm going to talk about the um, user interface design um, for the user's rights. So the first one, in terms of perspective, um, users always is right. Users always is right. You cannot say that, oh, no, 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 this one is wrong. You don't say like that, no. In terms of user interface design, they are always like right for the users. If there is a problem with the um, with the use of the system, system is the problem, not the user. You may have heard this one all the times, but in um, in reality, you might think that actually it's their fault. But actually, they are always right, because they will say that okay, because this system is not good, so that's why when I just type, I just do as usual, but the system just like give me some wrong output have something like that. Next, installation. User has a right to install and uninstall software and hardware systems easily without negative consequences. For example, if you have a software and you ask them or the apps and you ask them to, to um, install the software, if they uninstall it, you must not have the penalization for an installation of that software. Or you shouldn't just like make that um un un installation to be just like very difficult task. Right? Don't do like that, because next time they will never use your system again. Right? The next one, compliance. User has a right to a system that performs exactly as promised. If you just like claim that your system can do this, can do that, and when they um use your system and the system can't do it. They may blame the system. That is compliance that you have to think about. 
นะครับ next นะครับ number four is instructions user has a right to easy to use instructions like user guides online or contextual help and error message that give the guideline to the users how do they fix the problem easily นะครับ for them to understand and utilize system to achieve desired goals and recover the problem efficiency efficiently and gracefully from the problem situations นะครับ number five control users has right to control a system and to be able to get the system to respond to a request for attention นะครับ number six feedback users has the right To a system that provide clear, understandable, accurate information regarding to the task that they um that is performing and progress toward completion. Number seven, dependencies. They have the right to be informed clearly about system requirements and successfully using software or hardware. Number eight, for the scope, นะครับ They have right to know the limits of the system capability. System can or cannot do what? นะครับ in what level? นะครับ um, number nine assistance. They have the right to communicate with the technology provider and receive a thoughtful and helpful response when raising concerns. นะครับ number ten. Their usabilities. Users have the right um have um to be master of software and hardware technology, not vice versa. นะครับ products. นะครับ should be natural and intuitive to use so that's why you can see that when people talk about smartphone นะครับ even we said that in the past we just use um the the um numeric keypad phone only and you change to be smartphone it must be easy enough นะครับ so they can even use the natural and intuitive way in order to control that mobile phone easily so that's why you can see that people Uh, we like um, to have the smartphone because it's easy to use, นะครับ easy to install or uninstall the apps, นะครับ if you don't want. Okay, so now let's talk about the principles of user-centered design, นะครับ so that means when you have to think of the user-centered design, just think of the user first, นะครับ if you were the user, what do you want from the system, นะครับ So, in terms of principle of user-centered design, the first one, you have to understand the business first. นะครับ Before you understand the users, you have to understand the business first. The business here means that the business that um your users are doing. นะครับ For example, if you said that your customers, นะครับ or your users, um are running a business of convenience store, you have to think. นะครับ and you have to understand the nature of the um, convenience store business นะครับ what should they do and what is their nature นะครับ um, the next one try to maximize graphical effectiveness because you can see that right now you can design everything on the screen นะครับ effectively because um, right now the <coughs> the screen resolution is like very good นะครับ but anyway you have to think Some of the design, ครับ Um, you may just like if your users normally they use smartphone, then you have to know that the size of smartphone screen is just at most like um six or six and a half inches in the diagonal thing um um direction only. So that means if you try to fit everything, นะครับ in a uh, one page, that is not good. Or if you say that okay. User can scroll left or right, นะครับ That is not good either, นะครับ For the smartphone screen, so that means in one page it should fit for some of the things that you think it is necessary for the users to do it in one screen only, นะครับ If there are just like some other functions that you can just like let the users to go to another screen, okay, that would be better. Instead of just like squeeze everything into one screen only, นะครับ The next one, think like a user, นะครับ As I told you earlier, just think if you were a user, what are you going to do or what would you like to have, นะครับ Then you have to use models and prototypes because when the user see the models and prototypes, they understand more, นะครับ More than the abstract things that you try to just like let them um understand. For example. If you would like to talk about like the login screen, นะครับ 
don't just tell the users that okay we have one lock in screen there will be um, five text box that you have to fill up and there will be like six buttons that you may be able to choose don't just like explain like that you should have models or prototype and show the user so that they understand what you are explaining um, focus on usability focus on usability when you um when users have to use your screen or the user's interface design it must be usable after that invite feedback when you just explain to your users, describe for the usability and the um, user interface design, um, they may have like some comments or some feedback. Just let them tell you, because they they are the one who will use the system. So um, you should just like um, hear your um, hear their feedback and then just um, fix or revise the problem as much as you can, and then um, you have to document everything because the need of the users if you just like here and remember sometimes some part might be like very very little details you can't remember it then you should document everything so the next one when you have to design the user interface you should follow um, the basic guidelines there are eight basic guidelines all together for the ui design the first one, design a transparent interface. That means um, the users can see like um, what are we going to do or what is the next step that you are going to have, something like that. Um, so that's why when you have to design a website, normally we need to have just like the, the website maps so that once you just like propose this one to the users, they know that, okay, once they click on this button, Okay, um, we're going to display on the next page and what will happen. Next, create an interface that is easy to learn and easy to use. What does it mean by easy to learn? Easy to learn here means that once the user do something, doesn't matter whether it's correct or wrong, they should know what will happen next or what to be done next. For example, if you have a box, um, if you have a pop-up windows, and if you have just like um, some buttons, for example, you have three buttons on the screen like this. If you say that you have a box with three buttons, The first button said yes. Second button is okay. And the last button said cancel. If the user just type something wrong, and then you pop up a windows like this, said yes, okay, cancel. Which button that user has to click? What is different between yes and okay? What's wrong if the users click on cancel? Uh -huh. So in this one, this kind of design is not good at all. Uh -huh. It's not good at all because it's not easy to learn. Next time when this box pop up again, the user will never know what will they have to do. And also this box, this pop-up window doesn't have any explanation at all. You just have three buttons. This one is not good. You should tell the users what's going on. Even you say that, hey, but anyway, users will not see it or will not read it. They always click on a button. So um, you can see that in here. Users because as I told you earlier, users is always right. They don't care whether um, your box is showing something or not showing something. Right now they see just three buttons, yes, okay, and cancel. If there is something wrong, I'm sure that the way that users will do, firstly, 
they will click yes first. And if the pop-up box shows again, they will click OK because they thought that, okay, clicking cancel or clicking yes didn't work, then they click OK. If they click OK once again and this window pop up again, okay, I'm sure that they will try can click cancel. Okay. And if they click cancel and there's nothing happen once again, they will learn that all. Oh, if this pop up box showing, you have to click cancel. Okay. Sometimes this is this might not be our intention, but it might be the bug of the program. But user learns already. So this one, you have to be careful. If this one happen, you must be able to explain that what's going on okay, when this box happen. Okay. So um, try to create um, user interface that is easy to learn and use. This one, okay, if you ask me that, is it easy to use or not? Yes, it's easy because we have just buttons. Then user just respond to this window by just clicking a button only. But the problem is that these buttons are not are not usable okay, because they don't know what's going on if they click on each button, something like that. And the design here that's, is not nice because you can see that we use different fonts style. Okay, Some of the buttons we use um, the um, capital letters. Some of them um, I use just like um, the um, case letter, okay? um, the, the sentence case, okay? like um, capital case for the first character and the rest of them I use a small letter something like that this is not good either the next one number three enhance user productivity once you create um, the user interface design it should be able to just like let the users to work effectively so it helps to enhance user productivity instead of letting user to just like go back and forth on many pages to complete that task that one decrease the productivity of the users because instead of letting users to finish everything in one page, okay, for example, on a computer screen, um, if you just like let them to use like many, many screens to finish okay, unnecessarily, that would not be the way, um, that would not be the good way. Okay. The next one, okay, number four, make it easy for users to obtain help or correct errors. If there is the error, it might be possible that users just choose or just enter some values wrongly, but you should offer or you should just like provide the help for them how to fix that problem. For example, if they enter some wrong values, instead of letting they go to the next page, you may just like pop up an error box to them first, and then you may just like bring the users to that error. For example, you scroll the page automatically to see what what's wrong with the input that users enter. Apart from that one, okay, you may just like highlight the error that users input. For example, if they type something wrongly, you may show with the red color. Okay. Some of us may just like clear out that value for the users and just like make that box to be in red so that users know they have to fix this problem while some of the people when they design the error handling they still show the error value but they just put the color of the text in red and then show the error tell that okay what's wrong with it and um you let the users to fix that problem by themselves by just like um changing or editing that values okay, that is um for guideline number four now for guideline number five try to minimize input data problems. So you can see that in here, okay? um, there, are some, there are some examples that you can see that how people um, try to minimize input data problems. Okay? For example, okay? for example, if you go to buy something, um, some products from convenience store like 7-Eleven or other convenience store, you can see that Right now, the cashier, they don't type number of items or the product code anymore. Normally, they scan, okay? they scan um, the product code by using barcode. Okay? Even you buy like more than one piece of the same item. Okay? Instead of typing two items okay? and then scan. Right now, if you buy two items of the same product, they scan each product 
um, item at time. They don't press any button um, to enter the number of item at all. Because this one, okay, is a policy of the company that if they enter number of items, you may enter wrong numbers. For example, if the customer order just two items, but you just like press the button wrongly, if you press one or you press three, because you can see that on the keyboard, one, two, and three are on the same row. Uh -huh. So the things that will happen is, firstly, customer will receive the wrong number of items, and then they may complain uh -huh, um, to the cashier that this one, they charge, um, they overcharge the customer, something like that. So that's why um, the cashier normally scan one product at a time without pressing number of items. But anyway, what if the barcode scanner is um, broken? They still have like some other alternative ways in order to um, solve that problem as well. If they have just one cashier only, okay, the things that they may fix the problem is that they may have to just type the number of the barcode manually. This might be an, um, an alternative ways for them to fix the problem. Apart from that one, let's think. You can see that when we talk about like um, the convenience store. Why do I have to talk about convenience store? Because it's the easiest example that all of us have seen it. Suppose we would like to pay the money. You can see that right now, many of us have been using the e-wallets or m-wallet from your smartphone. You can see that we don't need to type anything with the cashier's machine. The things that they do is that, the, the, the things that we have to do is that we have to use an application to open up our e-wallets, open up the payment to let the cashier to scan on the barcode on your smartphone. You can see that in this one, apart from um, the, the uh, error free, is that um, you don't need to just like touch on other people's computer. That is good for the um, um, social distancing policy right now. Second one, it supports the bring your own device. Even the customer can bring their own device for their electronic wallets. So it's the touchless ones. So you can see that, but anyway, some of the some of the payment system, like if you go to some um, coffee shop, for example, if you go to Amazon coffee shop, even you, you say that, okay, you can pay by using the QR code, but when they ask you for the member card, they still ask you to press on the buttons anyway. They have the numeric keypad and then you have to press on the button. I'm sure that soon they will have to just develop an app in order to let their members to scan, to, um, to let the barcode for the member ID to be scanned uh -huh, instead of pressing the buttons. Uh -huh. So this one, okay, people try to find um, the way in order to minimize the input data problems as much as they can. Uh -huh. So uh, one good way is that we may use like some technologies like um, scanning the barcode or we may use like um, the touchless ways like um, by using some radio frequency. Uh -huh. For example, on many of the mobile phone right now, we have like the near field communication technology or NFC to tap on um, your mobile phone with like the scanner, for example. If we go to um, the BTS system, uh -huh, um, you can just like use the applications or you can use the um, specially designed SIM card so that you can just like load your electronic wallet into that SIM card and also you can just tap on the gate in order to open the gate to go into the um, SkyTrain system. Uh -huh. This is to minimize input data problems as well. Uh -huh. The next one, number six, provide feedbacks to users. Uh -huh. um, provide feedback to users means that your system has to provide the feedback to user that what's going on. For example, some of the feedback might be in terms of like the LED lights, 